pump it up, pump it up. Train. Come on, come on. Train. Pump it up, pump it up. The day to gain inspiration To make a positive change in the nation We're inviting you to partake in conversation To raise your vibration It's the day that we will all celebrate All of our peeps that make this thing elevate Watch the negative fade away Cause it's the day with Trey Grand rising, everyone. Welcome to the day with Trey. I'm your host, Trey Holiday. I want to welcome you to a terrific Tuesday. I'm really excited because we have some amazing creatives in the building today. First, I get the opportunity to talk to Mr. Kyle Abraham. He is the owner, the choreographer, and a dancer with AIM by Kyle Abraham. He is bringing a show right here to the Seattle area on Wednesday, the 21st, at the Moore Theater with the program STG. Uh, uh, presents which is their performing arts uh, program so they're bringing different folks here to bring us some amazing talent right here to these stages um, and I'm also excited because after Kyle I get the opportunity to talk to Destiny Otusanya who is a digital creator and I'm really excited to talk about her brand and her platform Des is vibing um, y'all may have seen her out there because she is taking over uh, the airwaves over there you know so I'm really excited that she's here joining me but of course y'all know it's the top of the show so it's a great time to tag and share this stream participate with us go ahead and share the stream with folks who you feel could benefit from a daily dose of dopeness right here on the day with Trey if you can't watch us we still got you covered because you can listen to us anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Just search Converge Media Network in the day with Trey. You'll find me on whichever podcast platform is your favorite. So go ahead and search for us. You'll find us there. Well, you know, I'm really excited because up next we got Kyle Abraham joining us all the way from Pittsburgh. Seattle Opera presents X, the life and times of Malcolm X. The story of one of the most misunderstood figures in U.S. history comes to McCall Hall for an exceptional night at the opera. Pulitzer Prize winning composer Anthony Davis produces an American Shoot classic with influences from classical music, jazz, pop, blues, and more. Don't miss X, the life and times of Malcolm X, February 24th through March 9th at McCall Hall. Details at seattleopera.org. Africa Town Plaza is our latest affordable housing uh, development project. It's uh, 126 units of affordable housing over community commercial space. It's the first time in my career, and I've been doing this for 10 years, that I was able to design for people who look like me. Africa Town Plaza is a beacon of hope. Africa Town Plaza is a love letter to the community. my mind a lot don't need no time watch i don't know how i got you in my pocket spot get a spade miss you every day you seem like the barging down got my heart no barging in from the bed to the floor to the couch might wait the neighbors up but you didn't break you out in the end we're gonna make a chat then we're gonna hit the show part two we don't need no pause miss you we're gonna get to you don't need a power shot my steel. Face the fact that copy my steel. Face the well, I'm really excited to talk to my guest, Kyle Abraham. Hi, Kyle. How are you? Oh, I'm hanging in there. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's great to have you with us. Thanks so much for making time in your busy schedule to be with us here on The Day with Trey. Now, I mean, you have a phenomenal dance company, uh, AIM by Kyle Abraham. I want to hear more about the background of you as a choreographer and a dancer. Tell us a little bit more there. Sure. Uh, I started my company um, shortly after grad school or while I was in grad school in the early aughts. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania originally, and kind of grew up there in the house and um, hip hop and rave scene uh, and found my way to studying dance when I was about... 17. Um, I saw the Joffrey Ballet perform a program to Prince's music, um, and it was my first time seeing ballet. 
I only went because it was something related to prints. And uh, ever since, I've just really had an affinity towards creating and thinking about different ways in which we can look at movement, movement to express ourselves and to tell stories and different narratives. Yeah, well, you have a, a show coming up this Wednesday at the Moore Theater. And I know it's always exciting when we can bring in amazing talent like yourself. Tell us about some of the excitement you're experiencing taking your show out on the road to different cities uh, and bringing it here to Seattle. Yeah, we always love coming to Seattle. I think maybe this is maybe my fifth time in Seattle. Um, third time at the Moore, I believe. Um, every time it's really exciting to have a different uh, interaction and engagement with the audience. The company is touring several different programs at the same time, really. So this program in particular is a really um, well thought out uh, repertory program. And when I say repertory program, it means it's a program made up of several different works to create an evening. Uh, the last time I believe I was there, we were doing an Untitled Love, which was a program all set to the music of D'Angelo. But what you'll see uh, this week is a program that's in some ways looking at kind of uh, ideas of past, present, and future with a new work by a choreographer, um, Andrea Miller, um, called Year, um, which is still in a preview stage. But I think their audiences will really feel its impact um, and its resonance with her being a, cre a creative force in today's um, um, scene. We have a work by, Andre by uh, sorry, by B.B. Miller, who's a, a big kind of idol of mine. Um, and B.B.'s been on the scene for a, for a good while and has some uh, some roots in the uh, Seattle and Washington area. Um, we're doing a work of hers called Rain, which premiered in 1989, I think it was. Um, it's a really, really beautiful solo work. And then I have some works on the program as well, one of them being If We Were a Love Song, which is set to the music of Nina Simone. Wow. I mean, music and movement uh, go hand in hand. And I know this is a part of SCG's performing arts kind of series, you know, bringing different works uh, to the audience here in Seattle. But there's something so special about music and movement. Tell us more about how you drive inspiration from the different kinds of music that you're using for your pieces. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways, I'm really thinking about what's the storytelling that the uh, composer may have been interested in and how that correlates to my own life experience. Uh, for a lot of the, the songs that we're using in the Cena Simone suite, I was really thinking about songs that were really emotive and had, had me thinking about love and loss and unity in different ways. Yeah, that's really special. I also think too that, you know, the ways that the audience experiences a dancer out there, there's so much emotion that is also being, I guess, you know, woven through their movement. How do you choreograph for that to make sure that the dancers on stage are being able to emote in that way and bring the audience in? Yeah, you know, I really try to think about how best to um, get the dancers as performers to be really vulnerable and have them be um, present in whatever they're sharing. Um, so even if it seems as if we are taking on something outside of ourselves, it's important to think about what are the connectors? Uh, is there someone in your life that you can relate to or you can try and embody that may be older, who may have more life experience than you do? How can we get you to express um, you know, yearning for something that maybe you haven't experienced um, in a way that allows you as, as someone engaging with an audience to be really earnest and um, really connected with your own experience. But a lot of that has to do with really directives. I try and really work on um, getting each performer to be all the more vulnerable and, and present in real time. Yeah, I think that speaks volumes to the audience and what they're able to capture and experience uh, in, in a show like this. Well, of course, Kyle, I just appreciate your time. I, it's such an honor to speak to you. I know uh, your name rings bells in the dance and, uh, you know, choreography community. So we're so grateful that you'll be here in the Seattle area. It's coming up this Wednesday. You have the details we can share with folks so they know how to get there and see this amazing show. Well, one thing they can definitely do is go to our website, uh, aimbykyleabraham.org, for all the details on the show. I think you can also find a listing on the um, Seattle Theater Group website and on the, on the board's website as well. Absolutely. Kyle, thanks so much for your time. Can't wait to see you out there on that stage this Wednesday. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Wow. Amazing. It was great to talk to Kyle, y'all. Uh, you know, up next, we have Destiny Otusanya joining us, a digital creative who's going to continue this creative discussion right after this short break. You're watching The Day with Trey. Here. It's designed to help prevent the COVID variants that we're seeing spreading now. Even if you got COVID before or got COVID booster shots and the vaccine, it's important to get this new vaccine. It's safe to get the COVID shot and the flu shot at the same time. Get both to prevent serious illness this fall and winter. Africa Town Plaza is our latest affordable housing uh, development project. It's 126 units of affordable housing over community commercial space. It's the first time in my career, and I've been doing this for 10 years, that I was able to design for people who look like me. Africa Town Plaza is a beacon of hope. Africa Town Plaza is a love letter to the community. back everyone uh, to the day with Trey. I'm your host Trey Holiday. Joining me right now is Destiny Otusanya. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing pretty good today. Yeah. yeah this is exciting because we've been talking for a minute and yeah. Death is Vibing is a whole platform that you just have really said I am using digital media and I'm going to create a, my own lane. Tell us more about what got you started. Yeah, so I feel that I was a bit of a late bloomer of even figuring out that I really enjoy fashion. It wasn't until I went to college and really just branched out my wings and met a lot of amazing people that I really was like, wow, I really love fashion and I really love media. And the whole reason that I even started posting on social media is because I wanted to document my journey of how my fashion was beginning to evolve because I remember doing a study abroad in college where I went to Senegal in West Africa and just getting to spend a lot of time there with all the vibrant colors, everybody dressing, just in just so many different ways. It just really inspired me because I also am West African, I'm Nigerian, and just getting to be in that space, I came back and I was like, I know, I know what I want to do. I want to share that. Mm. Well, you're doing such a great job of sharing it, but also I think the audience is able to kind of grow with you. Tell us more about some of that growth that you've experienced since starting your digital journey. Yeah, I think that with social media, I think there's a lot of pressure nowadays for just anybody feeling like I need to have a social media following. I have to have this, I have to have that. I've learned through my journey how What's really important is you enjoying what you're doing and you don't necessarily have to have a lot of followers to make an impact. I think it's about building a loyal community. And I've learned that, you know, some days things you post, it might not get as much exposure as you want and that's okay. I've realized that you can't hold your value to the amount of views that you get on a video. and. The whole reason that I do it is just because I enjoy doing it. And I think that's the most important thing to ask yourself. Why, uh, why am I doing this? Why are you doing this? And if it's like, I want to get views, I want to be seen by a lot of people, as opposed to I'm doing this because I really care about it. That's something to really ask yourself about because it's not going to be as sustainable. 
because building a loyal community, building something like that, it's not something I guess that happens overnight. And I, that's something that I've really been learning, just to have value within myself, even though I'm putting out that stuff online. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think you're really speaking to something that is so important. It's so key around our value, um, how we see ourselves and how we understand our own worth. Uh, because the digital age is is different, right? And we have a lot of people that are creating content looking for that kind of admiration and that kind of desire from folks to just constantly kind of center them. But I love how you are doing this because it's about you and it's something that you are bringing, you know, the outside world into your own journey. Uh, when you think about some of the ways that your audience has grown or that people have been able to receive what you're putting out there, tell us more about uh, some of the, the good things that you're hearing in terms of people expressing you know their appreciation for what you're doing you know it's interesting because there have been times where i've wondered man am i do i feel like i'm making like a true impact by just putting this stuff out there but the the biggest thing is authenticity and i've noticed by me just being authentic to myself and putting that out there just speaking as myself people can really sense that energy and in turn just me dressing how i do me sharing the words that i do it has been attracting really just a lot of just wonderful, amazing people. Whenever I go to my comment section, I always feel super duper happy because the people that see my videos, it's all just love and good energy, which is all I ever really wanted. And that's why, again, it's about the people that you're connecting with, not necessarily the massive following, because I think that it's a journey for every single person. And I feel like it's important not to compare your journey to other people and just even just receiving messages sometimes like, yo, Destiny, like you just dressing the way that you do, it has inspired me to just go out there and do that. I'm like, I love that I was able to do that for you. So it's always a reminder that you putting yourself out there in whatever way that you do, in any way, there's somebody out there that is so thankful that you are showing up authentically as yourself. Yeah, I agree, right? I think um, more and more people gravitate to authenticity than they do because you have this highly produced video or because you're doing the trendiest thing. It's like, you know, being able to be really um, authentic, but that's also about the integrity, right? For yourself, because you wanna look back on, you know, your body of work and have it really reflect where you were in that moment. Uh, and not that you were stretching yourself to try to be something that really wasn't resonating well with you. So I appreciate you sharing that that's, that's how you're doing it and that people are really receiving it in that way, which is so key and so important. And we also know the internet can find a way to be cruel. So it's good to hear that, you know, people are really understanding what you're putting out there. Uh, when you look back on what you have been able to do, I have questions about the folks that have known you before you went on this journey and how they're experiencing your growth and, and, and the, the, the merge of you know your fashion style and the uniqueness of it how are the people in your life your family and other friends kind of receiving you know all of this amazing explosion of creativity you've been showing yeah it's very interesting because I'd say before I figured out that I really love fashion like my family my friends now they're like wow destiny I I didn't expect you to kind of turn out this way but I love it <laughs> because I was very much just like quiet kind of more so in the background and I feel like my style how I express myself through my like physical body I think it's a nice balance with also my personality because I'd say I'm more like a mellow calm personality most of the time but seeing how my family and just other people around me react they just see how I have really just evolved and grown into myself really and that makes me really happy to hear because I do feel each day that I'm moving forward I'm becoming more and more like myself yeah. which feels good. Well, you're such a great example out there for young folks that are in the creative space that are, you know, primarily on these social media platforms because, you know, we have seen just kind of a, 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 almost like a fictitious lifestyle, like, oh, I'm just going to put it out there for the gram because like, you know, that's what's going to get me clickbait and all this. But I love that you're like, you know what, for me, it's about me being authentic. I appreciate you sharing that message. You know, when you think about younger folks who are coming up and they may want to, you know, 
do what you're doing. They may want to showcase their growth or, you know, their unique style uh, in, in the world of digital media. I, I want to give you a second because I want you to look right there and just give them some words of advice and encouragement from what you've been able to experience right there. Let them know. I think the number one thing is, I think the biggest thing that can hold you back is your doubts in your mind. Because for me, that was a big thing, feeling that, man, I don't know if I have enough to offer right now. I don't know if I have all the skills that I would like to present to the world. And the biggest thing is you as you are right now, you have so much to offer. And the biggest thing you can do is just, just do it. Just do it because it makes you feel happy because I think that's the most important thing. And by you doing that, just you posting, just starting to post, you will start attracting the right people because it really is about attracting the right people and doing it because you truly enjoy it. So just remember to always be authentic to yourself and remember why you're doing it in the first place and just really revel in that joy you have for it because you're capable of doing anything you put your mind to. Destiny, this is so amazing. I am so happy that I get to continue to follow you on your journey. And anytime you have a good message for us, just know the day with Trey is here for you. Uh, of course, if folks are trying to figure out how to follow you, uh, how to stay connected with your journey, let them know right there also how to do that. Yeah, you can follow me on my social media platforms, for example, Instagram at Des is Vibing. And also in there, I have all my links to everything else that I do. So yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Destiny, it's been a pure pleasure. Thanks so much for being with me. Um, Y'all, I'm telling you, creativity takes on all kind of forms. And when we have the power to be our authentic selves, it drives change. It drives creativity and uniqueness. So a huge shout out to Destiny. Y'all know I'm going to wrap up all this creative energy right after this short break. Stay tuned. You're watching The David Trey. Big Tobacco thinks they know everything. They think they know you, your community, the places you go, the way that you spend your time. They think they got you all figured out. Down to a formula, a calculation based off of numbers of what they think they know. Show them they're wrong. Learn more at theythinktheyknowyou.org. Africatown Plaza is our latest affordable housing uh, development project. It's uh, 126 units of affordable housing over community commercial space. It's the first time in my career, and I've been doing this for 10 years, that I was able to design for people who look like me. Africatown Plaza is a beacon of hope. Africatown Plaza is a love letter to the community. What's up, Seattle? Rose City, Big Boise, Spokane, Sea Town. I see you every weekend on Back to Besa. And of course, I'm bringing you stories from all over the PNW. You already know your girl's keeping it real everywhere I go. And of course, you can stream current episodes right now on the Fox Local app, available on your smart TV. Seattle Opera presents X, the life and times of Malcolm X. The story of one of the most misunderstood figures in U.S. history comes to McCall Hall for an exceptional night at the opera. Pulitzer Prize winning composer Anthony Davis produces an American Shoot classic with influences from classical music, jazz, pop, blues, and more. Don't miss X, the life and times of Malcolm X, February 24th through March 9th at McCall Hall. Details at seattleopera.org. You on my mind a lot, don't need no time, watch I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot Yeah, this bay, need you every day You seem like the barge in them Got my heart, no barge in them From the boot to the floor to the couch Might wait the neighbors up But you ain't didn't break you out In the end, we gon' make a chap Then we gon' hit the show Part two, we don't need no pals Miss you, we gon' get two Cause you don't need a power shot Copy my steel Face the fact that Copy my steel Face the fact that
Welcome back everyone to The David Trey. I'm your host, Trey Holiday. Huge shout out to my guest today, Mr. Kyle Abraham with AIM by Kyle Abraham. Y'all want to get your tickets at stgpresents.org. You can also go to his website, as he mentioned, uh, and get the tickets for this show coming up this Wednesday at the Moore Theater. Uh, it, you know, it's clear that he has a very specific way that he is using musicality in his choreography. And if you're into dance, if you you are into movement and expression and the ways that movement and music collide. Y'all want to get down there to this amazing show, Aim by Kyle Abraham. Please get your tickets today. And of course, huge shout out to Destiny Otusanya with Des is Vibin. You know, it's clear that, you know, she as a young creative just brings me so much hope, y'all, because we can get it right in this digital age. She's showcasing that by being authentic, she is being very specific about the things that she posts and the ways that she posts it so that she is attracting the right audience and so that folks are able to understand she's on her own. Own journey and y'all are on that journey with her through her digital platform it's a great expression of how we can get it right you know there's a lot of wrong happening in the digital sphere but I love being able to spotlight and showcase destiny who is doing this the right way so of course I'm inspired by what Kyle and destiny shared here today I want y'all to be inspired because no matter what it is there is a way for you to see yourself as a part of the solution as they have shown you here today. Y'all know for me until tomorrow at 11 a.m. Peace. Converge Media produces culturally relevant content for Black and urban audiences. Our coverage is raw, transparent, and objective, praised by community leaders, government officials, and residents. Support Converge Media today via Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal at Converge Media.